Good evening and welcome to uh, the BCS Learning Development Specialist Group. Uh, my name is Kevin Streeter and I'm chair uh, of the specialist group and uh, delighted to welcome you this evening to 15 years of education technology trends. Um, just before we get started, uh, a couple of uh, introductions uh, from the group. So the BCS Learning Development Specialist Group, uh, if you haven't come to one of our events before, uh, we are a group who are for those that are involved in uh, the development, delivery or management of learning to IT and communications professionals and users. So basically anyone involved in skills in any form, whether it be end user uh, right the way through to academics, um, Anyone involved in delivery of learning, um, we're interested in them. So uh, if you're not part of the group, then uh, please go along to the BCS website and uh, sign up to, to join the group. Uh, just a little advert for some of the future events we're looking at running. Uh, so we're going to be looking at T-levels, uh, hopefully in July, um, the T-level reforms and how they're going to work. And uh, the speaker for that is uh, hopefully going to be uh, our president this year, BCS president, uh, who is uh, leading the T level, uh, one of the T level panels. Um, the session on how to write an apprenticeship standard uh, for anyone that's interested in the apprenticeship world. And um, the final one we're looking at is on inclusive approaches to learning development. But if you have any other ideas for future events, then please send them along uh, to myself or any of the members of the committee. But um, um, we're always open for new ideas and new people to come and join us on the committee. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Stuart Ayres, who's going to be our main speaker this evening. And uh, Stuart, I'll hand over to you to uh, kick us off for the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for inviting me. Let me uh, Just flip you over to be presenter. presenter. Well, thank you very much uh, for this evening. It's really exciting to join everyone uh, today. I, I first uh, gave this, this talk two months ago <laughs> and how things have changed <laughs> since the start of March. Um, but the but the themes the, the themes have suddenly become extremely important, I think, the, the ones that we're going to discuss. Uh, this morning much more relevant to, 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 to the time, uh, a little more theoretical perhaps two months ago than they are uh, today. Um, so uh, to get started, uh, I'd like to take you on uh, my, my personal journey through, through, uh, through teaching and through use of, of EdTech, which became a bit of an obsession. Um, so um, I started teaching um, 15 years ago. Uh, before before uh, before that, I was a, uh, a geologist. I had two separate lives before. I was an exploration geologist looking for oil and gold um, all over the world in North and West Africa. Uh, so I left school and went off to university. I, I did a degree in geology. Uh, I started a career. My career uh, got cut short by the price of oil. <laughs> I changed career to be uh, an IT consultant. Um, and gradually, through a, 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 a long convoluted uh, way, I, I came back. I became to be a teacher. I came back to teaching, and um, so I, I left education for for a good period of time. Um, and and on my re-entry to to uh, to teaching, um, I found I found it surprisingly unchanged, uh, particularly in the, in the impact of, uh, of of technology on the sector and the way in which we taught, which which I found uh, I, I found that quite interesting really. Um, and it, it, it caused me to reflect a great deal on, on how we talk, how we teach, and the tools that we use to do so. Uh, Fifteen years later, I'm now a, uh, in charge of research and development for Montague Place, uh, which owns a handful of schools, one of which is Westport School in Pinar. Uh, that's where I'm based. Uh, if you want to follow me after this, you can find me on Twitter, on Stuart, as I'm always interested in other people interested in the same kind of things as, as, as me, aren't we all? Um, and like we were saying, uh, in all this reflection and coming coming out of of uh, of, of the sector uh, and back into it, uh, I, I I end up my my most recent job before this one was teaching in in a huge old school um, 
built in 1850, uh, 1859, I think, uh, with, with, with enormous stone walls and uh, classrooms designed um, in, in, in the kind of uh, the, the period of the development of the school system that we, that we use now. And, uh, and if, you, if you think about the world back in the 1850s, uh, it, it probably would do a little bit like this. So if you think about what, what, the, what the armed forces look like, soldiers were walking around in, in, in their red tunics. Uh, and carrying swords by and large. Uh, medicine uh, what was a <laughs> gruesome affair. Uh, it was to be in that poor gentleman's uh, uh, shoes today, uh, in the middle of the room. Uh, factories were, were, were far more risky places to be than they are now, uh, and lots of, lots of very heavy machinery uh, in, in, the, in the kind of a, the, the main thrust of the industrial uh, revolution. Schools looked a little bit like this, so, so they had arranged in rows and, and somebody stood at the front whose job it was to impart information to other people in the room. Now if you think about how much the world has changed it, it's, a, it's an off-fed uh, you know, trope really I guess that I'm, I'm rolling out here that, 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 uh, that the, the world has changed a very, very great deal except possibly the model uh, at the bottom right hand corner so if you think about um, soldiery uh, now in, 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 in the 21st century it looks remarkably uh, different to, to how it looks back in the 1850s. Soldiers have got all kinds, they've got air support, they've got smart weapons, they've got lots of protection and, and, uh, and support from all over the place. Medicine, thank goodness, is, uh, has changed a little bit. It's far less like the, the, uh, uh, the kind of scene at the top right. There's much more, uh, you know, um, uh, much cleaner, much more, more, more technology driven. Uh, technology has influenced uh, medicine deeply. Of course, thank goodness, uh, with, with, with a great deal of research uh, and development. Factories are less likely to be places where you're going to lose bits of yourself and more likely to be places where, where, uh, where you see robots helping out uh, and you know, cleaner, safer environments for, for everybody. Uh, classrooms, well, <laughs> they're not that much different really when you think about it. That we, we still arrange students by and large uh, in rows and columns. Uh, the board colour has changed. 100%, I think it's, it's fair to say, there's been a dramatic change in the colour of the board at the front. But, but essentially, structurally, uh, the whole system remains uh, comparatively similar. And although there is technology, and it is scattered around, uh, it's maybe not had the kind of leverage that you can see in, in, in the other areas. And I, 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 would, I might argue that, that that's the same in a lot of sectors. Uh, it, it, it's often seemed to me that, that technology has had a, had, a, had a deeper impact on, on, on the many of the areas of our life uh, that has necessarily uh, on, on, on teaching uh, and education. And if you think about what teaching is, um, it, it seems kind of obvious when, when you first approach it, but when you break it down to, to, to what, what the job of somebody like me uh, really is, uh, my job is to explain things in ways that people will remember uh, and recall and then be able to use somehow. So I, I, my job is to train people, train people how to retain knowledge that I'm imparting and help them to get through the next stage of their their education into, into examinations and beyond. And, I, and I, I hope, of course, that what I do uh, leads to people you know, going on to university and thinking, oh yeah, I, 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 uh, I remember uh, Mr. Ayers teaching me that, that thing. That's a really helpful thing that he talked about, databases, whatever, and I'm still using the knowledge that I taught them many years before. So if, if that's what the job entails, we are, we are training to, and explaining to, to uh, help people retain information and, and leverage it, you can probably break it down into kind of three main steps, I suppose. Uh, the first one being uh, the first one being in, in content. So, uh, so a lot, large part of what I do, large part of what a lot of teachers do, is they produce uh, content uh, or they access content, and content forms uh, your diet as a student. Uh, what, what, what you are going to be told about, and and, uh, and the material with which we're going to teach you. And back in the kind of 1850s, uh, you might have uh, uh, you, 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 you might have been uh, that job might have been uh, done by somebody like this, a rather stern-looking uh, chap, uh, whose job it was to stand at the front of the room and to know a lot of things. Uh, so the job of the teacher was to know everything and then impart information that they knew to all the students. And the student's job was to uh, take it down, <laughs> to, to write it down and to learn what they've been told and then to record it later on uh, during some kind of assessment. 
if you roll forward over maybe 100 years or so, the price of books and access to information and modern printing methods uh, and, and uh, changes in schooling have led to um, uh, you know, exercise books being more widely used than, I guess, uh, chunk. Uh, and and uh, much, more, much, more, much more use of uh, modern information uh, distributed through, through, through printed media. Uh, but um, children carried stacks of books around and, uh, and were uh, teachers used the, the information in the books to, to deliver their concept. And then the children wrote it down in other books. And, and that's how they learn through, through, through reading and recalling their uh, information. And uh, then in the 1990s, huge change, of course, the, the advent, the, the world's first web server coming on in, in, in uh, 1990, um, uh, gave us, it gave us a, a, a treasure trove of new information to access and uh, new sources of information, uh, a massive change, of course, to teaching. Uh, but the other methods, I guess, of recording what, what was being taught hadn't changed at all for a while. Uh, students still wrote down uh, and used worksheets uh, to, to record what was going on. So, uh, so although that there were undoubtedly changes in, in, in media through the years, uh, the, the, the recording systems, the way in which students uh, interact with, it, with, the, with, the, with the, that, that media, uh, possibly, possibly not so much. That's content. What about, what about delivery? What about the, the, the tools that teachers and schools use to deliver uh, that content, to, 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 to get it across? Um, so, uh, I remember from my own schooling, uh, these things you probably remember, uh, these overhead projectors. Uh, I used to love overhead projectors. And I, I always felt a little bit jealous of the teachers that, that got to use them, but uh, what they were, of course, I'm sure you've seen it, but if you recall, there was a sheet of acetate, clear acetate, which you lay on a, uh, on, on a, on a light bed, uh, which projected the image uh, of, of the acetate onto a wall, onto a clear wall. And uh, the, these, these sheets were like slides, and the teachers could write all of the slides, and the information would be projected onto a big wall. Um, and then there was a huge change over the next 30 years, and lots of technological uh, development to, 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 uh, to develop things like this, which, uh, which relieved you of the, um, of, of the uh, requirement to produce slides by hand on, on the acetate sheets uh, and um, replaced it with the requirement to replace them digitally, to make slides digitally. Um, and still they were projected onto a wall. Uh, they're still called slides and you advanced using, uh, you, using, using buttons, of course. And then, uh, and then finally, uh, well, finally uh, further on into, into, 20, uh, in, into 2000s and, and beyond, um, we started to see these things, smart boards came in. And uh, they they were expensive, and a huge amount of investment uh, was, was was required to equip your school with thousands of pounds worth of of uh, of, of um, smart board. Uh, the difference with the smart board, of course, was that you you could actually interact with it directly. You could walk right up to it and pick up a special pen or use your finger uh, and interact with the with the material um, on the board. Uh, so we. would replaced a, uh, a piece of technology which we <laughs> had some chalk and a, and a, and a board uh, uh, with some, some technology which cost you know, thousands of pounds and uh, still allowed you to write uh, on it, which, which was uh, good. Of course, it also allowed you to interact with, 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 with more media, of course. You, you, you had all that access to, 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 to digital media, which allows for some more interaction and also to be able to save stuff for later on, which obviously uh, represents a, 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 an efficiency improvement. So that's delivery. So, so delivery, uh, delivery ha had been impacted by technology, possibly more than everything else. Uh, 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 but you can see it's kind of an evolution. That there's an evolution of of uh, of, of uh, things you use. Uh, the the process um, is largely the same. And then at the end of all that, once you've uh, once you've you've made your content, you've created your content, once you've delivered it to your students uh, using these new methods. Um, you have to check how they how they do it to make sure that they understood uh, what you've taught them, uh, and, and, and to uh, hopefully see their improvement as time goes by. And you use assessment tools for that. And uh, you might uh, you might imagine back in the uh, back in the in, in the eighteen hundreds and nineteen hundreds, uh, assessment was was uh, was rather straightforward. The teacher knew everything, right? So they gathered all the books in that the students would be writing in. and then they marked the books. They they used pens to make remarks and to tick and cross. Uh, thing, things that they didn't, didn't agree with uh, that the students had written down. 
And then uh, as we advance through to the 1970s, quite, quite, quite a significant change uh, in the 1970s with, with, the, with the attempts at automated marking using things like OMR, optical marks uh, and recognition systems, which were clever really. They, they, they required a different approach to asking questions because you had to be able to ask questions uh, which, were, which were easily dissectable into, into uh, four parts for the student to identify. Um, but the advantage was, of course, that you can mark a lot very quickly. And I suppose it's fair to say that for, for, for a lot of teachers, um, a lot of what you're doing when you're checking, what, where, where, when, you're, when, you're, when you're assessing, um, you're, you're, you, may, you may not necessarily, depending on the question you're asking, you may not necessarily worry too much about uh, um, what the students um, you know, are saying. You, you just want a real, real snapshot of whether or not they understood uh, your point, what you were trying to say. Um, and OMR allowed you to do that uh, very, very quickly, of course, it, it, but it was still quite niche because of the way that you had to ask questions. So it wasn't like a mainstream thing. Um, and so it had limited application, I suppose, uh, in education. But fast forward to today where we, well, like it, it, we're, we're, we're doing much the same kind of thing. We're, we're, we're marking using um, the colored pens. We have, uh, we have systems for doing it, of course. We, 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 we have, Every, every school has a policy, marking policy, a way which they prefer teachers to feedback. But the process remains not dissimilar, really, to, to how it was 100 years old or so uh, ago, where, where, uh, where it's a time-consuming thing to do. Feedback for marking is extremely important to students, and it's, it, it's, it's really how you, how you catch, um, how you catch uh, you know, um, misunderstandings from, from embedding in a student's mind, and that, 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 that's the key to it, really, is making sure that you've you've spotted when, they, when they're not getting you and then you've corrected them. So, so that remains a, 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 a time-consuming uh, activity. So, so you can see, of course, that, that, uh, that over, over the years, the media has definitely evolved, hasn't it? The, the, the media with which we, we, we deliver material, the media with which we create material, with which we source material, um, the media has evolved a great deal. It's, it's far less likely to be paper-based, and it's far more likely to be digital and, and to be accessed from digital sources. You might argue, or I might argue, I suppose, that the method, however, uh, has not evolved at maybe the same pace. And actually, we use so, many of the same processes. And um, thinking about this, I think that there, there are there are four main reasons why that's the case, why uh, what's stopping um, digital technology from having uh, a greater impact on the way in which we teach uh, than you might expect. And I think that you can break those, uh, those, those barriers uh, down uh, as follows. First of all, um, if you think about uh, if you think about what we're, we're, uh, we're trying to do, uh, we, we've got targets as teachers, of course, uh, in education. Uh, and those targets are based on um, what students, what we think students are capable of and what we're trying to do for them. And one is rather reluctant to, 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 uh, to interfere in the process um, by which students are hoping to get some kind of outcome. Of course, uh, every teacher, every school has targets to meet uh, and every student represents the, 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 uh, the kind of embodiment of those targets. You want to do the best you can for your, for your students. You want them to succeed as much as you can. And most of us have a strong instinct to take care <laughs> when, uh, when teaching children to, to, uh, to, to meet their, their, uh, uh, their, their, their hopes and dreams. Uh, you don't want to take a crazy punt on a whole bunch of new technology uh, and then find it doesn't really work. And, and the, uh, the impact of your experiment uh, was a, a disappointing outcome for, for students. They, 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 they don't deserve that in, in terms of your, your uh, your, your desire to try new things out, uh, they need you to, to make good decisions for them. And so, so the, the requirement, the annual requirement to, to, to meet targets and to make sure uh, that, that you do a good job of them um, is of course going to, going to, going to slow down your, your thirst for crazy pumps on, 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 on lots of new technology. The second thing is that there's most certainly a, a, uh, an annual delivery model uh, for, for the process of teaching. Of course, and it has to be reliably improving every single year. Uh, so you can't just take uh, a, a few months out just to just to just to see how it goes and try try a new idea out and, and cross your fingers. Uh, the following year, you've got to do what you did last year, but a little bit better, uh, of course, because because we're always improving. Um, but that annual delivery model uh, means that you've not got that much time to experiment again with with crazy new ideas. Um, they need to be reliable. 
Uh, you can't spend uh, weeks or months uh, trying something out in the hope that it works out because you've not got awful like, uh, long time to, to, to get it right. If you think about an A-level class, your A-level class coming in uh, for, for the first time, um, there's a period of introduction and then they're straight into lots of material. You've got lots of information to get across to them. They need, uh, they need to understand that material very, very deeply. Uh, and uh, and in uh, two years after they started, they, they, they've got less than that. Uh, they, they've got to they've got to successfully uh, show expertise in everything that you taught them. So we have a lot of time uh, to to uh, to experiment uh, with new methods of delivery, and, and whatever you choose, you've got to be very secure on. And I guess a um, a relux a reluctance to to uh, uh, to take big punts on on the way that we do things is is a is a, is a sane thing to have as a teacher because uh, if you get it wrong then you've impacted students lives and that's the absolute last you know in the in the, in the wrong way that's of course that's not what you're looking to achieve and then the third thing is infrastructure uh, as you saw um, schools are uh, schools are comparatively rigid pieces of infrastructure they've got uh, lots of rooms and each room um, by tradition is, is is divided up by specialism and students move from room to room every hour or so. So every hour we break their concentration um, and ask them to go to a different room and sit down where we uh, teach them something unrelated <laughs> to the material they were being taught before and breaking the concentra concentration uh, e e each hour to move them from, from place to place and then start them on, on, on a new, uh, a, a new uh, uh, section of, of, of their school day. And the infrastructure you can't muck around with much um, in, in a place like the, the school that I, I, I taught until recently, uh, like I said, built in the, in the 1850s. So it had uh, stone, massive stone walls. Uh, you can just move them about, take them away to make your life a little easier and, and, and to move students around uh, smoothly. They, they, were, they were too rigid. Huh? They represented something of a barrier to, uh, to Wi-Fi signals. <laughs> and the infrastructure is, is, is quite fixed. I think of it a bit like a bit like oil. Um, one of the reasons why why why, why we are uh, dependent on on uh, on things like oil is because the infrastructure is 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 uh, deeply pervasive uh, and and expensive and difficult to move around. So if you think about, you've got a petrol pump and there's some pipes that that, that uh, the big tanker comes in and uh, uh, fills up the petrol pumps and it, it, it's it's fed from a, a a big oil tanker which goes to a port which is fed by oil which is pumped out of the ground. All that infrastructure um, means that it's very difficult to change direction uh, very quickly, uh, and and it's a big deal. You'd have to plan very carefully uh, and and uh, and change your infrastructure over a period of time, which is kind of what's happening. It's more of an evolution than an evolution, certainly in in, in the in the way that you can teach based on the machinery that you've got to teach with. And then the last thing is. It's expensive, isn't it? Technology is, is fabulously expensive, and like every sector, uh, teaching uh, and education are, are, are always squeezed. They're, they're, they're never a wash with cash, they're always squeezed tighter and tighter, uh, requiring further and further efficiencies, uh, which, which further means uh, a reluctance to, to, uh, to invest in things which are not absolutely certain are going to impact positively uh, on, your, on your delivery model and on, on your outcomes. Uh, you don't want to spend twenty thousand pounds on a box of VR headsets um, for absolutely minimal gain, in which the students don't, don't it doesn't, doesn't improve their their experience of teaching and does, doesn't uh, doesn't um, allow them to grasp anything in a way that you couldn't explain some other way. Mm, uh, the, I remember hearing a while ago that the average spend on ICT uh, for schools in the United Kingdom, the average annual spend was forty thousand pounds. So if you think of a, a, a reasonably sized school with a and your budget of, of a couple of million quid, forty thousand pounds, is uh, is not an awful lot, uh, but it is the salary of a teacher, and uh, you, you've got lots of other things to pay first before you get to uh, taking again uh, big punts on pieces of, of uh, equipment that cost a thousand pounds a piece. You, you, you can't just uh, you, know, you, you have to be very careful about the way you choose to deploy your technology. So all those things have have, have resulted, I suppose, uh, in, in a kind of a um, a, a, a resistance to, to, to just trying all these uh, things out. So this is, these, I suppose, are part of the reason why after, after leaving the profession for, for, uh, uh, for uh, sorry, after leaving um, education for some 15 years, when, when I came back to it, I found it not that much different from how I, uh, I, I, I went into it. I started teaching as a uh, IT 
and a computer science teacher in a school. And it was a school of, it was a small school, about 500 pupils. And the IT room was a little room at the top of some creaky stairs that had 15 computers in it. And uh, it was a real treat for children to go to the, the, this, uh, this little room with computers in because it had the internet and uh, you know, it's like a place to be, a, a different part of their, uh, their day. And these 15 computers, uh, initially, the, 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 uh, the, the, the uh, when I, when I turned up, I found that we were doing lots and lots of, of PowerPoint and uh, lots and lots of, of spreadsheets and Word documents. And it gradually uh, changed over the time I started teaching. And one of the, 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 big, uh, the big changes for me, um, represent the future in many ways, uh, was uh, a real kind of harboring of change that, that, that uh, it kind of pointed to, the, to what the future might start to look like. Bear in mind, this is, this is kind of 2005, um, the VLE. The virtual learning environment. So if you if you if you, if you talk at all, you, you'll definitely come across uh, one of these. Uh, this the one I was showing on the screen right now. This is Moodle. If you remember Moodle or not, Moodle was a virtual learning environment, which was kind of a Web two tool, which uh, which allowed um, teachers to create courses and then add lessons and content to them to upload material for students to download. Students loved the VLE. Uh, I, I set it up for, for, for my, uh, my, my school uh, and, and uh, children interacted with it immediately. It had a, had a chat function so they could, they could speak to each other. Uh, you, you, could, you could set little questionnaires for them, all kinds of interactive material. You, you could embed, well not embed, you could have links to, to videos and things. So it, it, was a, it, was, it was really cool, really futuristic. And it allowed you to, to set tasks uh, for a certain kind of assessment. Sort of pattern matching based uh, questions and stuff like that that, 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 uh, that would, would, would provide students with instant feedback and it allowed them to get kind of um, you know, to, to, to want to improve their, their, their scores uh, so they get all competitive with themselves and they go back in again and, 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 try, and try the quiz that you set again and to, to, uh, to, to get, get a higher outcome than their friend and that was great I think that's, that's exactly the kind of uh, competition that, 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 you, that you wanted to, uh, to, to encourage. One of the nice things about Moodle uh, in particular was it was open source. So, so very, very quickly, lots and lots of plugins and new additions turned up that you could install. And then uh, sometimes you go to upgrade your Moodle and you forget that you installed these plugins and you'd have to try and remember what they were and install them again afterwards. Um, but they extended its functionality so what? And, and of course, all, all sorts of teachers and, and, and professionals waited in to make content and make plugins for, for, for Moodle, but which, which, which extended it beyond its uh, initial uh, fabulous function uh, and it, uh, it was it was it was uh, very very cool uh, some schools still use it and of course um, VLE it wasn't the only VLE uh, that there are plenty of others um, uh, around now that that, that, that have all, all, uh, all turned up and all, all getting quite grown up as well so, so you've got uh, VLEs like, like, uh, like Frog and, 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 uh, and, and others that, that have extended extended the platform and of course Moodle itself has grown up too it's uh, much more much more uh, grown up uh, than it was back in, in, in the, in the mid-2000s. Mid and then um, in the last, uh, in the last uh, five to ten years, I suppose, I started seeing, seeing, uh, seeing the, the, the big guns show up. So uh, uh, with, 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 uh, with challenges to, to, uh, to the virtual learning environment. Uh, so starting, uh, I, I, I don't know which order they came in, uh, it doesn't really matter, but, but uh, starting with, uh, with, with Google Classroom here, so Google Classroom is, uh, if you haven't come across it already, Google Classroom is a, uh, it, it's kind of like a mega VA, you know, it, it's got the, uh, you, you, you can add uh, class notes and material, uh, and you can set tasks for students and then they can respond to, you, to your, your, your tasks, and uh, to an extent you can automate them. Uh, these days, it's got it's got uh, video uh, video as aspects built in, so you can start a video class, and all the students can, can can join it in in comparative security, um, and, and it's very Googleized. Uh, they've done some clever things uh, with 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 with, uh, uh, with Google Classroom, and and it's it's they they managed to simplify it, but keep some good stuff in, and it, it is extendable. Uh, you you can write uh, extendable code for it. But there's a there's a kind of a code base that you can wade into. Uh, a kind of JavaScript based, um, based interface that you can that you can add a functionality to to classrooms if you if you, if you dare uh, and best of all it's free right and it costs you money uh, so you, you can introduce your students quite gently to, 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 to some of these ideas and uh, then you can add all kinds of uh, you know all, 
other products added to it uh, relatively easily without changing your whole delivery model. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Microsoft OneNote. This is part of Office 365 uh, for education. And I'm, I'm sure lots of us use OneNote just, just for literally taking, uh, taking notes. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the delivery system for, uh, that you can use through OneNote is, is quite brilliant. Uh, you, 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 can, you can pass up all your, all your lessons. And so this is one of my computer science lessons. You can see that I've got all, 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 my, all, my, all my lessons um, that, that I can share directly with the students and I can hide things from them. And then I can, I can set them up on little tasks and I can dump a video straight in and I can write all over the screen and it updates their notes. Um, instantly and uh, their notes update mine instantly so I, I can share material very very easily with them so i think that the, the the these two these two systems um uh, are, are kind of showing a little bit of a way to the future aren't they they're they're, they're based on um productivity systems productivity models that are used in industry and really one of my big obsessions uh, starting teaching was i wanted to make sure i wanted to believe that when i, when I was teaching whenever i was teaching students uh, was was well and truly you know applicable to the lives that they were going to leave when they left. So, so I don't really want to have them using um, pieces of technology which bore no resemblance to to, to the kind of systems that they, they use um, in, in in workplaces. Um, you know, five years after they left school, I want, want to make sure that they're using things uh, very similar. And I think that that, that that these two systems are a bit like that. They're very collaborative. That they 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 allow for uh, for for. Uh, you know, for, for lots of people to work together and, and work on ideas um, uh, instantly. So, so that that's uh, so you started to see how how the uh, how the big guns, Microsoft and Google and, and others, might start to, to start to impact education um, uh, in a much more uh, powerful way than it seems to be uh, in principle for some time, really, uh, since the advent of the next uh, thing that I want to bring to attention. And uh, you can't deliver these without web access. Code. Uh, and, and of course, that's been a, a fundamental blocking point in, in, in a lot of teachers' experience too. Um, whatever you can in the classroom, you might not be able to have students follow up on at home because they need to have web access when they get home. And you can't guarantee in a lot of schools that that's going to be the case, uh, which, 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 is, which is possibly a, another, really, another blocking uh, uh, aspect to, to the March technology. Just looking back, like we did before, uh, at where we've come from, really. Um, I think that you can you can see um, technology companies trying to uh, trying to get involved in education and, and try, trying to um, put tools in the hands of teachers and students uh, for less money, of course, because they're conscious of the of the cost aspects that, that, that I was um, speaking to you uh, about before when I said that obviously if you've only got a budget of you know twenty forty thousand pounds a year uh, you, you can't you can't buy lots of anything. Uh, <laughs> most of your uh, technological devices have an entry point in hundreds of, hundreds of pounds or, or even thousands. Uh, so you've got to be careful which ones you choose. And in 2002, uh, Apple turned up with the eMac, which was like an iMac, only huge, <laughs> flat, and not very colourful. Uh, and uh, it, but, but it was, it was uh, quite a lot cheaper, uh, and, and, and it, uh, it represented the kind of direction that the technology companies wanted to go in, in placing devices into the hands of pupils. Imagine how many uh, devices they can sell, they can do that successfully, uh, and and uh, and it was followed after in 2007 by by uh, by the little Asus EPC. The advantage of which was it was very very cheap. I don't know if any of you have had a play with one of these, uh, a chunky little laptop thing, um, uh, 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 quite small, um, uh, cheap, only only a couple hundred quid. Uh, you, you can roll these out on uh, must to lots of students, and I know that uh, a lot of schools did. They they, they went through um, expensive one to one schemes. Uh, rolled out uh, hundreds of these to students, and then found that they were quite easily vandalised <laughs> or damaged, and they weren't necessarily terribly durable, as durable as you need them to be for reliable classroom practice. Of course, if you've got 30, uh, 30 uh, year eight students on a Friday afternoon, uh, you, you, they, 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 uh, their devices have to work. You can't have uh, you know, seven of them who really can't engage, because uh, uh, you'll, you'll regret that. Uh, so, uh, so, so devices like these were, were a great idea, but they did have their flaws, uh, particularly in terms of durability. And then in 2010, uh, this thing appeared. I'm sure you you, you remember, uh, which which um, I'd argue was had quite a significant uh, 
uh, impact on, 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 on some of our uh, some of our practicing teachers. So the last school that I was in, uh, we, 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 we were able to, we were very fortunate to be able to insist that every student had one. Um, and um, for, for us, the, the durability battery life um, represented a, a, a uh, um, Big help because, like I said, you, you, you can't have um, doubts about reliability, uh, really, when you're teaching with, with devices like these. The, the devices you've got, you've got to have good IT support and you've got to have uh, devices which can stand a day's use uh, and, and a, day's, you know, a day's putting in our bags and carrying around in, in, in the school as well. So, so, so you know, web access has, of course, improved uh, over over the last decade uh, or so, and really, this is this is somewhere that that, that has to improve the future to to to, to allow um, the that full leverage, the full impact of all the technology that's being developed for education to, to, to really hit home. Uh, we need we need for students to be able to have reliable devices, uh, reliable devices that they can afford uh, and the schools can afford to 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 help. Uh, uh, to, to give out in, in, in our school, um, I think that the in the in school I, I, I was in last, um, the the the, uh, the 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 choice of of uh, of inexpensive uh, device was an important one um, developed over a period of time, um, and and um, after a little while we, we, we were able to to, uh, to 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 really cut back on the amount of time that students spent out of the classroom asking for tech support <laughs> and by getting the device choice right uh, which is absolutely key and hopefully technology companies uh, all around the world are are working on that and making making durable tough uh, devices with fantastic batteries and superb screens uh, that we that we that we can put in the, in the hands uh, of our students uh, I'm going to go past this. I, 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 uh, uh, I play the video. I'm just going to play a little video to you uh, that that, that, uh, uh, that that kind of illustrates the point. Really, um, this this is uh, something a couple, a couple of years ago. Uh, I asked the students at, the, at my previous school uh, to make a video about about what they what they liked about um, uh, the, the the systems that we were using, what they liked about Microsoft OneNote, and what they liked about the interactive the interactivity that that, that they, they saw as beneficial. Um, and there's, there's just there's one scene in this that, 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 I, that, that I'll, I'll draw your attention to. I just want to play it for a few minutes. I won't play the whole thing because uh, you know, I won't make you sit through that. But I'll just uh, play the whole thing. So bear in mind, by the way, um, I didn't tell them what to do with this. I had, uh, um, you know, I just said, uh, it was for competition, I think. And I said, uh, you know, go make a video about, about uh, how much you like this product uh, and, 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 uh, and what a difference it makes the way that you learn. And off they went and they did it. So, so, uh, so they came up with this. And then there's a scene that I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Doing. It's easy for most students to get into their feedback from the feedback from the teacher in the more effective. For the students, it means they are more than money from the school or more panic, and they can never spend it at home. It's a really good video after the school. I can now really get involved in my lessons, which makes them more joyful. One of the most fantastic features is the ability to collaborate. It's a little thing. Education. So we found that it was important specifically uh, to help teach children using modern 21st century workforce. And we believe that one sort of one is a perfect tool for this child to really help children thrive in the 21st century. Um, um, That's the little bit that I want to show you there. The, 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 the most important part of that, that clip was, was, was when they're walking down the corridor and they're seeing those students uh, and they're all holding devices and, and they're, all, they're all interacting. They're actually queuing to go into a class, so the, the, the lesson's about to start. And they're using technology in a way that makes you realise that they don't think it's a thing. You know? they're, 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 they've all got it, they're interacting with each other, they're talking, showing each other stuff. Um, but they're carrying uh, handheld devices uh, and, and they're looking at the next lesson and they're thinking about the day and they're thinking about the homework and they're thinking about lots of things, uh, lesson uh, you know, content and creation and stuff they've got to do, but they're not thinking about the technology. They're not thinking uh, about, about uh, the device in their hand. It's just a tool and, and the fact that everyone had it made a huge difference, of course. So that's where we're at. That's where we got to in all this time. Uh, so 
uh, it got me thinking, well, what's next? What's what's next 15 years? I've been teaching 15 years uh, and I've seen some, some really quite significant changes uh, in, in that time. Um, and and in, in some ways, it, uh, you know, the, the, the ways in which we talk have, 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 uh, you know, as uh, the methodology, the processes haven't changed that much, but like I said, the media uh, have. And I wonder what it might be like in another 15 years. Uh, so, uh, what might thirty years of education look like through through, uh, through these these three lenses: the the the, uh, the creation of content, uh, the, the the delivery of that content, and, and then and then checking that it's worked. So, I think that, that probably you're already starting to see uh, the the the, uh, the advent of of of, uh, of intelligent devices uh, and 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 uh, and highly interactive delivery models to to to, to kind of leverage what we're allowed, uh, what what we're able to get across. Uh, to to, uh, to students, particularly with the use of of, of, uh, of AI, and I, I think uh, I think over the next few years you're going to see uh, intelligent devices in classrooms uh, and uh, AI driven devices in classrooms, uh, and you're going to see more interactive um, uh, systems uh, like, like Google Classroom, Microsoft OneNote, uh, and, and 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 other note based uh, systems, which allow teachers to to really quickly get get material and content together and into the hands of students and and, and interact with it uh, and meaningfully. I think it's uh, I think it's highly likely that in in the, in the next few years you're you're going to have uh, voice assistants and uh, AI assistants uh, in in classrooms. They just make sense. And uh, I bet uh, an awful lot of us have already got them in our homes. Um, we, we, we've got, uh, you can walk into a room of course when you get home, I, I dare say many of you do, walk into a room and ask you to turn the lights on or ask, or ask what, the, what the sports scores were uh, for earlier in the day or set a time or, or, or any one of a number of other useful, useful things uh, that, that, that you ask AI assistant to help you with. And I've seen already um, schools beginning to experiment with uh, AI chatbots um, to 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 uh, to to uh, to do cool things like allow their students to ask uh, what the, what their timetable is like the next day, uh, and you, you, you see it with your own children. I'm sure my my my, my children will, will will come in and they'll uh, they'll they'll ask they'll, they'll ask Alexa uh, something about the uh, what's what's happening today or the weather tomorrow or to set a timer or or or, uh, or for all sorts of things, and you'll see that quite normally for uh, for school uh, as well. It, it, uh, it, it's an exciting prospect, isn't it? To be able to walk into a room and ask it a question and, and have it respond. And I'm sure that 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 that, that, that is is already becoming a significant um, um, addition and improvement. Once AI assistants get to the point where we can customise them more fully uh, and where where uh, where schools can add their own content, I guess that that's going to be a real key driver uh, in 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 their improvement. And I've I've heard about um, you know ideas where you can have an AI assistant in a room where, where it's like another person that you can ask questions of. And although all schools use uh, management information systems, would it be great if you could add one to, to, to that? So it, it's like having somebody you can ask questions of. You know, if you could ask your, your uh, 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 Alexa, um, how many of the year eights are on the free school meals? Or, 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 or how, many, how, how many students um, uh, got a score above whatever, or, 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 or were, were within a couple of marks of, of, a, of a grade boundary? You know, ways in which you can ask questions really dynamically while you're having other discussions with other people. Delivery, what about delivery then? Where, 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 where are we going with that? Well, I, I, guess, I guess the thing that we're starting to see a lot of, uh, first of all, we've got to get through this thing of getting cheap, durable, reliable devices into everybody's hands. Uh, and, and it might even be that the point at which we manage that, we've already moved on uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to devices like this, uh, where, where you've got uh, uh, headsets, of course, that, that, that are like the Microsoft HoloLens that, that allow you to, to, uh, to superimpose artificial uh, realities over the, the, the physical one that we're standing in. And you can just imagine the impact that, that, that devices like this um, can have on education. Um, I've seen use cases for these in which uh, students have been able to 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 assemble compounds <laughs> from atoms and and physically uh, stick the stick the uh, the atoms together to 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 make make different things. I mean that's cool, isn't it? And the, the point at which you can you can have a student interact with with uh, with things physically uh, is, is is a powerful lever to to help them to to recall or remember uh, the way that things work, uh, provided the 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 uh, provided the the uh, the task has been planned uh, very carefully. I think that you'll see uh, these once their their uh, once their price comes down, uh, and once the key thing is the content 
that's one of the the uh, things that's stopping them really from from, from, uh, from taking hold. The, the price, of course, of, of VR and XR headsets uh, is, is very high currently, and there's not really enough content to make them worth getting. I suppose just yet. I think a lot of schools maybe have a set kicking around. Um, uh, the point at which there's cheap, reliable content for lots of purposes is the point that you see them take off, um, and, and, and the point at which they, they start uh, being things that you have at home as well. Uh, that, 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 will, uh, that will mean that teachers like me can, can, can have a go at setting a task which might uh, rely on the students having access to a headset like this. What about assessment? Where are we going with that? Uh, so uh, you've seen assessment, uh, the methods uh, haven't changed an awful lot uh, um, so far. And again, I think there will be there will be looking uh, much more to the future uh, at AI assisted uh, um, systems for, for, uh, for, for assessment. And this is a screenshot for a piece of software I came across just a couple of months ago called, called Century. And what Century does is, is, is uh, it, when the student signs up, they, they get to sit a little test. Um, and at the end of the test, it kind of, uh, uh, it, it uses, uh, it uses um, huge amounts of data to kind of work out where the gaps in their knowledge were and then set them up in little tasks to, 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 to improve those gaps um, in their knowledge. Uh, so, so this is this kind of AI assisted uh, uh, assessment. The teachers still get to see, and obviously you've got this little example of the dashboard, uh, but, but, the, but they're helped and assisted by, 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 um, by smart marking systems that, that, that can spot um, in, in, in related uh, areas. So, so, uh, so the fact that you couldn't answer this question in your physics test, maybe it was because the maths that it relied upon was something that you're lacking and they can take you back to a test uh, that, that can spot that. So it can use a cross-disciplinary cross approach to helping you learn because it's learning, because it's learning from big data to, to spot um, patterns in, 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 uh, in, in, in gaps in knowledge that it can help you to, to fill in. So, so I'm guessing that you're probably going to see that kind of thing um, to, uh, much more regularly in a classroom, and, and, I, and I hope so, because, uh, because marking and feedback are absolutely crucial to teaching. Uh, what you're trying to do, uh, and you're by, by, by feeding back to students, you, you're wanting to address misconceptions and misunderstandings as fast as possible uh, before they become embedded things. Uh, you, you, you want deep understanding and quality understanding for students and, and you want them to be able to leave your classroom preferably with exactly that idea and then think about it later on so that they start to embed it. Uh, and, and the more you get systems which can help you to do that, uh, which can help speed that process up, uh, the, the, the better, of course. Uh, for, uh, I've got a little video clip here, uh, a YouTube clip of, 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 um, of HoloLens, uh, you know, teachers uh, talking about how cool HoloLens will be, or system like it anyway, uh, for, for teachers. I won't play it now, uh, but do you want the link there? <laughs> and I'll post it later on for you to uh, take a look at. There's tons of this stuff on the internet. It's the kind of thing I can waste a lot of time uh, duly over. Um, and so I think that's, that's, that's where we are at the kind of the present moment in time with these new systems coming on uh, to, to help us to finally leverage technology to, to, to improve student outcomes. You can see they're on the cusp of a lot of changes uh, in, 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 our, in our delivery methods and models and the tools that we're able to use. Where are they going? Ultimately, in, in 30 years time, in 15 years time, more, what, what are we going to have? I guess maybe not 30, but certainly 15 years time. What do you think? Uh, we're going to have. So if you were to go back into one of my schools in 15 years time, uh, what might you, you see? Well, I think that I'm going to make a few bold predictions. I think the first thing that you're, that you're going to see is you're definitely going to see AI assisted marking, tracking and intervention systems. I think they'll become quite commonplace. Um, as, as the likes of Google and Microsoft um, um, start, start uh, chunking through their phenomenal amounts of data and using learning algorithms to spot uh, patterns uh, in, in that data that, that Google's getting from its classroom, for example, I think that, you, that, that you're going to start to see plugins which allow you uh, to, to, uh, to interact uh, much more smoothly with, with, with student assessment material uh, and, and to feed back to students much more quickly in, 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 way, in much more nuanced and smart ways to spot gaps in their understanding. I, I think that it's absolutely, you're definitely going to see uh, AI, AI assistance in class, and I, and I suspect that that's going to become uh, comparatively commonplace. You, you, you can imagine uh, being able to go into your classroom and, uh, and, and, and ask for assistance. It, 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 uh, it seems normal in a world in which you've already got 
um, a, a, you know, smart assistants on your phone, um, why wouldn't you have a, a, a web connected uh, um, you know, somebody in the classroom uh, to, to, to help answer questions just, just, just very quickly that can help to, to contextualize your lesson? What else? Well, XR, uh, where, where uh, you know, you're, uh, once once that content gets gets delivered, once once teachers and and, and a content uh, makers collaborate to make uh, inexpensive, reliable uh, um, content for for use in in in, in inexpensive uh, goggles and glasses that, that you can superpose over the world. Of course, we're going to use them. They're, they're, they're going to be they're going to be huge, aren't they? If you can if you, you can add. An overlay to the system you're doing to to, uh, to to give it more information. Of course, you're going to do that. I guess this depends on on an acceptable device uh, that we can all afford coming out in the next few years, and then depends on on, on armies of developers producing content for them, uh, which which hopefully you, you'll, you'll see at the same time. And I wouldn't be surprised if you have app stores for uh, for, for XR material. Uh, remote tutoring. Uh, yeah, well. You remember I said that I made this uh, presentation for a couple of months ago. Well, it's come of age now, hasn't it? That's a great tutoring with virtual classrooms. I think it's it, 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 it now seems just obvious that, 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 uh, that you're going to have classrooms that don't really exist and lots of students joining them. Uh, and and, and I, I'd, uh, I'd add that, uh, that um, you can expand that to be just remote schooling. And of course, the last few weeks have seen rapid changes, uh, and 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 uh, you know it just shows what happens when 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 everybody's under pressure. So then suddenly you have to find a way to do something. Um, largely, uh, good good sections of the teaching profession have just figured out how to use the, the, the systems system that I showed you before uh, to deliver lessons in school remotely. And and of course they're going to see rapid uh, rapid adoption um, after this is is over because. You've now got a whole load of uh, teachers that realize the value that, that they may not have seen before, a whole load of students that are suddenly upskilled uh, to, to, to use uh, you know, the virtual classroom uh, system. So, of course, you're going to see um, a, a duplicate of this. And beyond all this, uh, many more uh, Oak Academies, uh, many more digital schools that, that, that's, that students can join across different, different time zones, leveraging the other things that I told you about AI system marking, uh, AI systems generally. Uh, as, as well as having teachers uh, create and deliver content. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'd argue that, that as we are rapidly going through this period in which we, we, we are digesting phenomenal amounts of, of data, we're also learning very quickly much more about the psychology of learning and these systems are going to use that. They're going to use the psychology, the, the, the ways in which you learn uh, to, to divide material up much more uh, in, in, in better ways for students to learn, uh, so, so uh, to, to, for for you know to, to control cognitive load on students um, as they go through lessons, uh, and, and to allow them to learn at optimal rates. I'm very much hoping uh, that we see more systems like that that that, that aren't just about um, content and aren't just about uh, marking, but they're about combinations of those things that, 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 that use the way in which we're understanding uh, the brain. And the way in which people learn uh, much more effectively to leverage finally the power of technology. So it may be that after my 15 years in education, you know, and after the the kind of the, the gaps I saw at the beginning, but it may be that we're about to see very rapid change uh, in, in learning systems. And uh, given the importance of the sector, and given how it's absolutely critical, of course, teaching, as far as I'm concerned, education is the most important thing we do. If you don't teach people properly, if you haven't got, uh, if you haven't got students that are hungry to learn uh, and that know how to learn uh, and, and that can, 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 uh, can, can go off and uh, you know, learn themselves and, and want to carry on doing it, then you don't have a lot of other things. And society pays in ways, in ways that it doesn't even realize it paid. So it's critical that we get this right. It's critical that these, these systems uh, are, are developed over the next few years, and then we get to, uh, to to enjoy them with our students. Whew, so thank you very much. <laughs> you just listened to me talk about a, a long period of time. Uh, I, 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 I hope uh, I hope that, that I, I've uh, I've piqued your interest in, in in some of what I think that the the, uh, the learning technologies of the future might be like, and, and how we come to the position that we're in. And I wonder what your thoughts are. Uh, in, so thank you very much, Stuart. Some very interesting points there. Um, I'm going to put my camera back on. Um, 
it, uh, I guess we've got a number of questions that have come in, but one one comes to mind immediately. It, what's the role of the teacher in the future? Is it just crowd control? No, I don't think so. I don't think, uh, we, we've, we've been talking, haven't we, about, about, the, uh, about some of these ideas, the, 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 uh, the, the, the way in which teachers understand students. Uh, teaching is about relationships. Uh, and and it's, it's, uh, you know, your relationship with your students is, 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 uh, is really, really important, of course. Um, and, and it's one of the drivers. If you, if you, if you, we, we all remember teachers we really liked and we, we got a lot out of. We all remember teachers we, we didn't. <laughs> Like, and, and it's largely about the relationship that you have with the students. And, and I think really that this, the purpose of all the technology I've told you about is, is much more likely to be about, uh, about improving the time you've got with the students uh, and, 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 and leveraging it. You know? And one of the issues is we don't have a lot of time with the students because an hour uh, is, is not much time um, to do a lot. Uh, and you want to use that in a maximally efficient way. And I think that, that using some of these technologies to, 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 to help you spend that hour more productively uh, can only be a good thing. Yeah. A um, couple of questions around um, sort of just investment. So uh, there's a good one here. Taking the UK as an example of coronavirus uh, and its impact on schooling, as we revealed, the UK is not as prepared as compared to other countries, e.g. Korea. Is it a shortfall within budget, infrastructure, um, inertia, as you talked about at the beginning? Where, where's, where's the slowness coming yeah. from? <laughs> yes, those things. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think it's I, I think it's a little, little bit of all those things, really. Uh, um, like, like I said, um, one of the issues we, 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 we've always had, well, it, it, it's all those things. It, it, it's, a, it's a shortfall in, in the infrastructure, uh, and in fact, probably in kind of combined approach um, uh, um, as well, I suppose. Like I said, if you've only got a very limited budget to spend on, 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 on approaches and devices, you, you're going to be careful how you spend it. And um, if you, if you can go to, there's a technology edu uh, educational technology show every year in London called BET, which is just brilliant. <laughs> January, uh, fantastic thing to go. And, and you can wander around that. It, it, it's uh, it, it's the, in the Excel center. It's colossal. You know, you can wander around. It's like a kilometer of educational technology. And you can wander around that drooling for a long time, but you got to take you got to take from that. You have got to uh, go back to the ideas which you can afford to deploy in the classroom. And of course, uh, with very limited budgets, that really does limit what you what you can do. Um, so I think I think one reason why we may seem uh, less prepared it depends. So um, I've really really my my, my role uh, most recently has been to get schools ready and uh, schools that I've been working with ready to teach remotely and actually we've done it really fast um, it's been possible to get a school from being almost entirely non-digital to being completely digital uh, in, in, in a couple of weeks using using uh, using just the technologies that, that, I, that I've been sharing with you earlier on today uh, so it, it, it's more it's more that the, 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 that the pressures of time I suppose uh, that, that, that make it harder for teachers to adapt rapidly to, to situations like uh, like this and Leadership too. I think if you if you've got got a school with a leadership that that, that, that has, has this kind of aspect as a, as a, as, a, as a future vision, and they deploy that technology, then they'll find a way. And, and the last few weeks have shown that people are finding a way. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, it's just a nice comment. Um, how about improved infrastructure in schools? Will Wi-Fi beacons for crowd control or location-based services be introduced? Whoa, imagine that location. Yeah. Um, funny guy, I've always, I've always kind of like, it sounds to be terrible. I think a lot of that terrible control thing. I, I, I've always kind of wanted uh, for there to be a system which allowed you uh, to, to, uh, to take the register without taking the register. So, so just to know who just came into the room. <laughs> and they left that kind of thing. So, uh, but I can imagine obviously a system like that might, might, might be open to, to, uh, to, to, to abuse. Um, but, but, um, would it be down to crowd control? Well, uh, maybe. I mean, uh, crowd control, sadly, is an aspect of, of education, isn't it? I mean, if you've got 2,000 people to, 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 uh, to, you know, to, 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 to uh, marshal around a massive building, you, you probably are going to crowd control, especially yeah. in the wake of uh, things like the pandemic. Great. Well, uh, I'm very aware we're, we're at the, the end of the hour. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I know we've had a number of questions coming, but uh, please keep the discussion going with Stuart. Um, 
very interesting talk tonight, Stuart. Thank you very much. It sort of certainly helped me think about how technology has evolved over the generations and what, what has changed and what hasn't changed. And uh, more importantly, uh, some of the things that we're seeing discussed, are particularly in general around BCS, around AI, it's really going to come uh, come home and be part of our everyday lives uh, in the world of education and, and teaching. So, uh, no, that, it will, yes, yes, very much so. So, thank you. That was really good session. Um, really enjoyed that. And uh, thank you to everybody that joined us this evening. Uh, we have been recording the sessions, so it will be available uh, on the BCS members YouTube uh, in the next day or so, hopefully. And um, please do keep in touch with the Learning Development Specialist Group and uh, look forward to joining, uh, having you join us at a future event. And uh, again, thank you very much, Stuart, for presenting tonight. Thank you very much, Adley. Thank you very much, and good night, everyone. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you.